Pastos Biology Topics from the Study Guide On page 9.22 in your study guide is a discussion of the synapse, which is a junction between neurons. Let's take a look at the structure of a synapse. Now here is a chain of communicating neurons. What do we call that? A pathway. Let's enlarge this part of the pathway. It'll include the tip of that neuron and the first part of this neuron, and it looks like this. Now let's assume the nerve impulse is traveling from the left side of the screen to the right. Therefore we'll call this axon part of the presynaptic neuron and this one will be the postsynaptic neuron. Now these neurons have certain characteristics. One is the presynaptic neuron has calcium channels in it. It's also filled with tiny cell organelles, vesicles. These vesicles contain signal molecules called neurotransmitters. Between the two neurons is a gap. Now this gap in the diagram is extremely misleading because the gap really is not much wider than the thickness of a cell membrane. The postsynaptic neuron contains specific receptors. Now remember what we mean by specific receptors for this particular neurotransmitter. Now, how does it all work? Well, a nerve impulse traveling down the presynaptic neuron reaches the tip. The impulse acts on the calcium channels, opening them up, and calcium moves into the axon and interacts with the vesicles, causing the vesicles to fuse with the post-presynaptic membrane and release the contents of the neurotransmitter into the gap. The neurotransmitter molecules immediately bind to the specific receptors, causing something to happen in the postsynaptic neuron. Do they automatically cause a nerve impulse? No. It causes a graded potential. Now, how will that graded potential become a nerve impulse? Only if it reaches threshold. As I have mentioned before, the synapses are the key to the operation of the nervous system. Let's look at a very simple view of what we mean by this. Let's pretend we have an arrangement by which three presynaptic neurons come in contact with one postsynaptic neuron. And by the way, in my neuron I've left off the dendrite, so all we have is the cell body and the axons. Furthermore, let's assume neuron, presynaptic neuron number one and number two are excitatory and presynaptic neuron number three is inhibitory. Now this is not a difficult idea. Remember this diagram of the graded potential. Remember that a threshold might be up here somewhere. Wouldn't a depolarizing graded potential increase the odds of reaching threshold and transmitting a nerve impulse. On the other hand, in this example, the hyperpolarizing graded potential drops further away from threshold. Wouldn't this one decrease the odds of generating a nerve impulse? So you see, the graded potential depending on whether it's depolarizing or hyperpolarizing, would increase or decrease the odds of producing a nerve impulse. If it increases the odds of the impulse, we would call it an excitatory graded potential. If it decreases the odds, it would be inhibitory. Let's further assume that the magnitude, that is the height of the graded potential, either up or down, is the same. If that's the case, we can answer some questions. Now to answer those, let's look at this diagram. What if a nerve impulse was arriving along presynaptic neuron number one only? Now remember, number one is excitatory, and this is the height of the graded potential. Would that lead to a nerve impulse in the postsynaptic neuron? 
Well, no, because here is where threshold is. What if a nerve impulse was arriving along presynaptic neuron number two only? Nope, same thing would happen. If the nerve impulse arrives only on number three, remember, that's inhibitory, this is what the graded potential would look like. No nerve impulse is generated in the postsynaptic neuron. What if the impulse arrives along one and two at about the same time? Both are excitatory. Well, number one creates a graded potential this high, number two adds to it, the graded potential is that high. Does it generate a nerve impulse? Yes, because the graded potential rises above threshold. What if the nerve impulse arrives along one and three? Well, number one is excitatory, it tries to do this, Number three is inhibitory, it tries to do this, and they cancel each other out, and there's no change. No nerve impulse is generated in the postsynaptic neuron. Same thing is true if it arrives along number two and number three. What if the nerve impulse arrives along all three of the presynaptic neurons? Two of them try to depolarize the graded potential, one of them tries to hyperpolarize it, and the end result would be this. It would not fire. Now this, this is a very simple view. Using three presynaptic and one postsynaptic neuron, in reality, a postsynaptic neuron may have hundreds of presynaptic neurons. And you can get an idea how complicated the processing of information in the nervous system Maybe.